I'm explaining a film from 2019 titled The Outpost. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the content. In 2009, the movie depicts the United States' two-decade-long conflict in Afghanistan. U.S. military establishes outposts in northern Afghanistan, including PRT Kamdesh, to engage with locals and defend against Taliban attacks. Staff Sergeant Clint Romshaw is among the new U.S. soldiers led by Captain Benjamin D. Keating to PRT Kamdesh. Sergeant Romshaw emphasizes the gravity of their mission by telling his troops not to think about home while they are on the chopper. They acclimate to their new environment after arriving. The next day, after exploring the area, the crew comes to understand how susceptible they are to Taliban attacks due to their perilous position within the surrounding mountains. They become more conscious of the risks they are facing as they hear from Sergeant Larson and other stationed soldiers about the commonplaces of Taliban attacks. As the soldiers come upon Martin fixing a truck, the events start to happen quickly. Just as the Taliban make another surprise attack, Sergeant Skusa steps in to save a puppy from being shot. In the middle of the confusion, the troops strike back, although a little clumsily. Staff Sergeant Gallegos chastises Private First Class Younger for firing too near to their position, while Ramek presses Specialist Stefan Mace for additional ammunition. But when Specialist Ty Michael Carter shows up with a different ammo bag, the two get into a furious fight. By directing a mortar attack, Captain Keating effectively stops the Taliban attack in favor of the U.S. troops. In the aftermath, Ramek stops Gallegos from hitting Younger. Larson chastises Carter for arguing with a comrade while facing the Taliban in the meanwhile. After being shot numerous times during the skirmish, Jacob is taken to the hospital right away and eventually makes it out alive. Along with discussing Jacob's condition, Sergeant Romshaw, Larson, and his allies Rodriguez and Thompson also consider their odds of surviving in the treacherous PRT fighting zone and their previous experiences with the Taliban. Later, after providing a brief update on their progress and an exhortation to continue their work, Captain Keating calls a meeting of the 54 men in the Tactical Operations Center. A unanimous consensus was reached when he emphasized the significance of collaborating and building good relationships with the people of Kandesh. As per the plan, Captain Keating sets up a meeting at the Shura building with the older residents. He expresses fear about being able to tell the difference between regular Afghans and the Taliban through a local interpreter. Captain Keating takes off his safety gear in spite of the dangers and presents the advantages of working together, such as money rewards and growth initiatives. The natives eventually consent and put down their guns in a symbolic gesture of cooperation. The troops appear self-assured in their isolated position as they lounge outdoors at night. But the next day, they had to deal with another Taliban onslaught. Martin warns Captain Keating that driving the big truck on the steep slopes will be difficult when he gives the order to bring the LNTV back to Nate District. Captain Keating leads the expedition unfazed, with Carter and Sergeant Romshaw providing protection. They are accompanied by specialists Mace and Gallegos in a separate car for support. Lieutenant Andrew is tasked by Captain Keating with managing the station while he is away. The convoy comes upon a new hotspot on its route. Carter and Sergeant Romshaw investigate and find a dead chicken. They inform the other trucks of the innocuous discoveries and carry on with their journey. The convoy is being led by Mason and Gallegos while Captain Keating, in the LMTV, struggles to maneuver the tight path and tragically explodes as he falls off a cliff. Carter and Sergeant Romshaw go to his help, but they are unable to save him or turn the operation around. After grieving for their commander, the troops resume their tasks. In honor of Captain Keating, the outpost, formerly known as PRT Kandesh, is renamed COP Keating, commonly known as Camp Keating. Captain Aleskas succeeds Captain Keating as the outpost's commander. The soldiers continue to face dangers from surprise attacks by the Taliban while they get used to their new leadership. The soldiers react quickly when an explosion occurs close to the mosque during Captain Aleskaz's familiarization trip. With gunfire and mortar shells, they drive back the assailants. Following the incident, Sergeant Romshaw and his group patrol the perimeter under the leadership of Captain Aleskaz. They climb the mountain range to view the Taliban's vantage positions in an attempt to comprehend the tactics of the adversary. Sergeant Romshaw mows on defense tactics, realizing their weakness but finding it difficult to come up with a workable scheme. Sergeant Josh calls a second gathering of the community to discuss Nasir, a local who is allegedly helping the Taliban. Sergeant Josh confronts them with Nasir's treachery, threatening their community with repercussions should he continue in his behavior. Muhammad, an interpreter and informant for Camp Keating, shows in with news of an impending large-scale Taliban onslaught. The soldiers pay attention to the warning and get ready for the approaching attack despite their initial doubts. 
One morning, the soldiers walk warily in pairs across a bridge after being accused of crying wolf. Younger and Captain Aleska's cross after Carter and Sergeant Josh. Underneath Captain Aleska's, a bomb bursts, quickly killing him and leaving Younger traumatized. To stop Younger from killing himself, Roma Shea sends him home with Captain Aleska's remains. The new commanding officer, Captain Brower, assumes leadership of the camp and declares that Camp Keating is about to close. The soldiers discover an Afghan ID that they believe belonged to the bomber during a patrol. Captain Brower is against Roma's suggestion to look for the bomber and is more concerned about getting by till the outpost shuts. When Roma and his troops come under attack while on observation, Captain Broward gives the order for mortar backup. Broward's judgments are not in line with Roma's, and this causes friction between them. The captain discloses that political factors have caused the camp's closure to be delayed. Lieutenant Andrew, who is worried about Carter's leadership, advises him not to treat their captain disrespectfully. Later, mortar attacks on the camp indicate the enemy's access to cutting-edge armaments. Captain Brower talks with the sergeants about the issue and handles an unexpected visit from the elders of the community, who blame the troops for the death of a young girl. When a dog attacks a local, tensions rise. Captain Brower shoots the dog, startling the soldiers in the process. Lieutenant Andrew assumes charge following the resignation of Captain Brower. He suggests keeping the closing of the camp a secret because the soldiers' morale is still low. After the villagers leave their hamlet early on October 3, 2009, Muhammad hurries back to the camp and warns of an impending attack by a sizable contingent of Taliban militants. After being written off at first, Carter notices activity in the mountain ranges. Shortly after, an explosion shakes the camp and startles the troops. Lieutenant Andrew gives the order for Thompson and Rodriguez to fire mortars at the approaching fighters, but before they can do so, another explosion occurs, killing Thompson and forcing Rodriguez to take shelter. The operation center is scheduled to respond to Andrew's urgent call for air help in two hours. Gallegos is tasked by Romerche with driving one of the surveillance cars, but they soon run out of ammo and are trapped down. Amid the confusion, Carter hurries to replenish them. Sergeant Josh is injured before he can fire the RPG during the fighting, while Sergeant Scusa is shot while carrying ammo. While the doctor administers to them, Sergeant Josh's pulse fades and Sergeant Scusa sadly dies from his wounds. The soldiers in the operation center are waiting tensely for air backup to arrive in the hopes that it may change the course of the conflict. Gallegos keeps radioing for additional ammo for 40 minutes, until the gun inverts two malfunctions and leaves them exposed. Carter shows incredible bravery as he darts through the mayhem to deliver the ammunition that is desperately required, deftly avoiding Taliban strikes in the process. He manages to go to Gallegos and stays with him in the wrecked car, the Loris. Sergeant Romshaw gets hurt by the Taliban's RPG retaliation, which occurs when he is trying to save Gallegos by firing the machine gun. Running back to their barracks, he meets Faulkner and Griffin, the last two troops. Sergeant Romshaw advises them to take a longer path in order to escape shooting when they disclose their plan to employ a distraction to assault additional Taliban militants. Sergeant Romshaw goes to the aid station to check on the fallen Sergeant Josh and, regretfully, helps to place Sergeant Josh's body in a body bag. Unfazed, Griffin and Faulkner rush forward. The sound of Taliban gunfire breaks through his sadness as a sniper marks them. Sergeant Romshaw makes a quick grab for a sniper rifle and dispatches the danger. An infiltrating squad of Taliban fighters entered Camp Keating from the opposite side. In order to save Gallegos and their trapped allies in the Loris, Griffin, Faulkner Hart, and Seidler team together. But as they encounter a bump, the Taliban notice an open fire, forcing them to escape. This thwarts their attempt. In the nick of time, Lieutenant Andrew gives the contentious order for the soldiers to disperse and hand over control of their outpost to the Taliban while they wait for reinforcements. To force Lieutenant Andrew to act and retake the camp, Roma Shea, on the other hand, takes matters into his own hands and dashes into the operations center. As Mace Martin and Gallegos depart the truck, Larson and Carter give covering fire because Gallegos' squad in Mars 2 loses communication. Sadly, Carter just about saves Mace, who is closest to the car, when the three are ambushed and shot by hostile soldiers. Romshaw moves a small squad in the direction of the front gate at the same time, hoping to stop the Taliban from getting any closer to the camp. They successfully repel the assault for a while by using a machine gun. The air assistance arrives just as the adversaries are about to overwhelm Romshaw, destroying a large number of the Taliban forces. An Air Force bomber plane opens fire all around the camp. 
Carter and Larson, carrying Mace on a stretcher, seize the moment and daringly rush for the aid station. Inside, they meet up with Romashi and his group, where Mace is given emergency medical care. With the U.S. forces taking back their camp, the conflict comes to an end, forcing the last of the Taliban militants to flee in the face of overwhelming air support. Mace is given life-saving transfusions because to the kind blood donations made by troops at the aid center. As they continue to act heroically, Larson and Carter save the lives of their injured teammates. Captain Portis leads additional backup, which brings much-needed help to Camp Keating. Captain Portis commends Lt. Andrew for his leadership throughout the fierce combat, despite his sadness over the deaths. The lethal outpost is to be closed and swiftly destroyed, Captain Portis declares. Mace is transported to a hospital by a medevac in order to receive more care. Romshaw Carter and the other survivors get ready to flee Camp Keating throughout the course of the night. They leave the terrifying memories of their stay at the outpost behind as they take out in a chopper the next day. Rome Shah, among the turmoil of war, at last makes touch with his wife at one of the U.S. outposts, offering a brief moment of comfort. Carter starts talking about his repressed feelings and his time at Camp Keating while considering the sacrifices made by his comrades. Eight Americans were killed and 27 injured at the Battle of Kamdesh. Rome Shah and Carter were awarded the Medal of Honor. Their bravery and valor were demonstrated when they were inducted into the most decorated battalion of the war. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Hope to see you next time.